Well, um, babies are now can get learning passports because Dubai is issuing uh, learning passports for children. Dubai has announced the introduction of learners' passports, which is a new system designed to track the educational journey of every newborn in the city. Now, this initiative is part of the broader education strategy of 2033, which is launched by KHDA in collaboration with the Dubai Health Authority. Each newborn will receive a learner's passport upon birth, which will serve as a comprehensive record of their educational milestones. This system is intended to monitor children from their earliest years through their academic journey, ensuring that they enroll in school at the right age. Now, the learner's passport is part of the educational strategy of 2033, focusing on raising parental awareness, enhancing teacher training, diversifying educational options, and as well, strengthening the Arabic language and cultural heritage in Dubai. I love how they are focusing on the Arabic language, mm. really, because like, um, I, I love English. I love it so much. It's, it's I love it. But of course... Um, I grew up being very strong in Arabic, but then I moved to another school mm. and my Arabic kind of like went downhill. And then after that, um, and that like, until I had worked with like Arabic companies, Arabic media companies, that my Arabic got back strong. Right. And Arabic is a very beautiful language. Mm. Like one word can mean a lot of things. I love the phrases that you teach me, but I, I, know what you mean in terms of I love my ability to be able to speak Irish mm-hmm. um, however I I have a I'm a I used to be fluent because I okay. went to an all Irish school but the, there's only small pockets yeah. of the country that really speak Irish so it and you have to you have to study it to a certain point but we really don't use it in day to day and therefore uh, not mo- I don't think most people could hold up their hands and mm-hmm. say you could have a very fluent conversation so The country really has to push it and the country has to make it uh, very accessible to young children, make it kind of, it's got to be coming from every angle, from the home, from the school. True. And if they're pushing it in all education initiatives, which we've discussed before in terms of um, uh, different ways they're even pushing it on social, mm-hmm. it makes it more accessible to you. So it's really nice that the country is pushing it. I agree, by the way. I swear to God, like, you know, I, I mean, the way that you feel about the Irish language is the way that probably our parents feel about us. with Arabic right 100%. you know what I mean yeah like I mean I um you know like um my sister when she was like younger she didn't grow up with like a very good Arabic system around her mm-hmm. even though we, my parents would speak to her in Arabic but she would not really quite understand it as much as I would and yeah. uh she had like an exam of um you know like you know like pictures and she would like write the word in Arabic and she had a picture of a camel Now, the camel in Arabic is called Jamal. And oh. she didn't know the word. So she wrote it in Arabic, camel. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's, kind of, it's that kind of like confusion. Mm. But so she, you spoke Arabic at home with your family always? Uh, no. No. I mean, I spoke with my family Arabic. And my family kind of like, they um, raised me in a way that, you know, like Arabic... is your first language and you need to like know it mm. it's very important and i like i, I learned it I, i did you know i was very like strong i as well i had a very good foundation because like i remember my arabic teacher she was very like strong with arabic and teaching arabic she was very passionate um however my sister on the other hand You know, like, it's she's like the second child. They don't, like, really, they oh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can speak whatever you want. You can, if you like the language, sure. If you don't, sure. So it's like, whatever. It's <laughs> such an amazing blessing to be able to speak two languages. And I think, like, if you're, if you have parents who speak one language and another language, like, I would fully in the home, like, just throw it on the child, like, this is English, this is Irish, because otherwise uh, it's so much harder to take on new languages as you yeah. grow up. Rich, actually, uh, uh, our boss, my brother, is um, learning Arabic, and uh, he's doing so well, but it's been years. Yeah, because Arabic is a very hard language, you know, for mm, example. Like, it's so different to what we grew up, which was the Latin side of the world languages. Exactly, 100%, you know, and as well, like, you know, there's, like, difference between, like, casual Arabic Mm. And Fusha Arabic. Fusha. 
فصحى Arabic. Arabic. You got it. You got it. And I love Fusha Arabic. She knows Arabic. Bad. <laughs> well, you know what? For example, like in Fusha Arabic, it's very hard. It's not as easy as people think it is. Uh, we don't think it's easy. That is for sure. Um, 